Hey there, this is Steven, the OS Bastard, and I am here today to show you how to use SSH through Terminal, which comes with your Mac and operates a lot like the Linux command line. Um, Terminal is effectively the command line for Linux. A uh, quick logistical note to NIAC students, there are some audit restrictions on using SSH on the campus Wi-Fi, so please talk to your instructor about that. Um, one other thing, this is not my personal account. I don't have all my cool widgets and stuff up here. Um, this is just a simple account I use for testing stuff. So if you ever want to ask about cool stuff you can do with your Mac, um, feel free to shoot me a message. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is open our terminal application. And we can do that two ways. I'm going to show you how to do it through Launchpad, then through the normal applications menu. So here's Launchpad, which is Mac's new iOS merger for their applications viewing. Now you're going to look here in Utilities, and here you'll find Terminal, right here, which will display just like a command line on Linux, or on the work server you'll probably be logging into, which is handy. Another way to access it is to go to your Finder, go to your Applications menu, From there, you're going to look for the Utilities folder, which, by the way, has a few more useful items like the Disk Utility. There we go. Within your Utilities folder, you will find Terminal, if it loads sometime today. Oh, you're going to be fun today, aren't you? There we go. and here's terminal. Now if you're going to be using this a lot I suggest you put it into your dock and to do that you can alternate click or control click on your terminal window in the dock, go to options and you can ask to keep it in the dock. And So when you quit it that way it'll stay in the dock just like one of your default applications. Okay so now we have our terminal. Now assuming you're at home, this should be no problem, or on the local network through the special restrictions I already mentioned, um, you will be able to SSH into the work server. Now there are two ways you can do this. One, you can just insert the SSH command into your terminal directly. Or, if you like putty a lot, you can use an almost putty-like interface. So to do that, you go to your menu bar up here, one moment, and you click on Shell. And from there, you can choose a new remote connection. And as you can see, you have several options here just like you would with putty. So we're going to choose Secure Shell. And as you can see, I already plugged in the address I'm looking for. But if you want, you can choose to add a new address. So for example, if I wanted to put in the remote access address, I would type in the global IP that we use. And it will store it in your list in your user account. Very handy in case you forget the login or don't have it on a sheet of paper. So I'm going to choose the server I'll be SSHing into, and then I'll insert my username. And you'll see the command it preps down here. And what that will do is it'll basically pre-format the command into a new window. And actually, I'm not going to log into that account. I'm going to log into another test account I have on the work server. Cheers to Doctor Who fans, by the way, here. Okay, so now I'm at the work server. And it asks for my password. And it will not display any asterisks or anything when I'm inserting my password. That's all right. You're just going to have to roll with it and accept that you may make a screw up and have to hit a lot of backspace a lot. Do you see what I mean? There we go. Now hopefully you've already seen this through PuTTY or you've logged into a Linux box directly and you may notice something. Where are the colors? All the colors that like to 
to um, clarify what stuff is, whether it's a directory or a program or a text file, don't seem to show up here. Well, that's all right. Colors are actually able to cross over the network, and by default, you'll see it come through in applications like VI if you write any scripts. However, I'm going to show you how to enable colors with the, for just listing directories and stuff with a simple little modification to your profile information. Um, there's probably a better solution than this, but this one seems to work all right. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the dot bash understroke profile file, which I have highlighted. So to do that, at first we're going to copy a backup of it, just in case we screw this up. We need to replace the one we modified. Oh, and a minor note too, lack of colors won't stop you from working here, but it's like trying to paint a paint by numbers picture with gray paint. You know, it just is not quite as thrilling. Now that we've copied a backup of our bash profile, we're going to go ahead and edit the file. It's just a simple text file. So we're going to dot vi dot bash the period, meaning it's a hidden file, profile. And you can see here that our colors actually do come into play in VI, where everything's color-coded. What we're going to do here is we're going to add a quick little alias, which is basically saying we type one thing, it means another. Before I do that, I'm actually going to show you we can show colors in this. We just need to specify the color option when we use our ls command, like so. So what we're going to do in the bash profile is make a quick little modification so that it will always do that. So using VI I go in to edit the text file. I'm going to specify alias. Before I do that I'm going to make a little comment to just note what I'm doing since I'm changing this from the default. Now I'm going to use alias. I'm going to type the command that will be created for the alias. So now it's going to be ls will equal ls with the color option every time we write it. Oops, got that escape key. That's all right. Let's do that one more time. And ta-da! I have now changed my um, bash profile so that the next time I log in, every time I type ls, I will actually be inserting the command ls with the color option. So now we will have a handy display like everyone else experiences. Well, I hope you can find this tutorial useful. Um, feel free to message me or speak to your instructor if you have any questions.